Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the concept of the slope of a line. In particular, we're going to look at the slope of the tangent line, the line that's tangent to the function. With other words, the line will touch the function at just one location right there. So let's call that point P. So the tangent line only touches the function right here. The black line is the function. Let's call that the function f of x. It only touches the function at one location, P right there. Let's say that if we draw a line down from the point where they touch, down here to the x-axis, let's call that value here a, so x equals a at that location. So when x equals a, the tangent line touches the function f of x. Then let's pick another point, a little bit further to the right, some delta x to the right. Now, in terms of distance, delta x is usually considered to be a very small distance. So if we move a very small distance to the right, then this point right here is x equals a plus delta x in such a way that the distance between those two points will simply be equal to this, this, this point right here minus this. So a plus delta x minus a, the distance between these two is simply delta x, and that makes, of course, a lot of sense. Now what about on the vertical distance? Let's say we have a point right here, and we have another point right here. Let's call this point Q. Now notice this point is not the same as this point right there, because at that point they're no longer touching. Tangent line only touches the function at one location. But the height should be the same right there. So if I look at this point right here and this point here called Q, the height in terms of the distance from the x-axis in the direction of the y-axis, that would be the same distance. Notice that along this function right here, if we then say this point right here can be considered at the height of f of a plus delta x, and this point right here is the height in the y direction of f of a. So in other words, if I plug in the value a for x and evaluate the function f of x, I get f of a at that location. So evaluating the function f of x at the point x equals a gives me f of a. Sometimes a better way of writing it where it makes more sense, you can say this is equal to f of x equals a. With other words, the function evaluated when x equals a is equal to this height. And the function evaluated when x is equal to a plus delta x, so we can also write this as f of x equals a plus delta x. And then you can see that the height in the y direction of that point can be found by plugging the value a plus delta x in for x and evaluating the function. Notice that the height would be the same for the function as it is for the tangent line, the red line that I drew. And might as well write it in. The red line represents what we call the tangent line, where the line touches the function at point P right here. So this can be considered the tangent line. Now, what about the slope of that tangent line? How do we find the slope? And as you have learned in algebra, the slope can also be found by taking the ratio of the rise over the run. So what we do is we take two points on the line and we find the change in the, in the horizontal direction, which is what we call the run, and we find the change in the vertical direction, which we call the rise, and then the slope would be the ratio of the rise over the run. In other words, the slope of the tangent line, the slope is equal to the rise over the run, going from point P to point Q, and the rise would be from this point to this point, so the rise would be the difference of those two locations, so the rise would be equal to the change in the y direction divided by the change in the x direction. So that's another way of, of writing the rise and the run. It's simply how much is the y change, how much is the x change, that ratio will be equal to the slope, and in this case the change in the y will be the function evaluated at a plus delta x, minus the function evaluated at a, that would be the change in the y direction, and we divide that by the change in the x direction, which simply would be a plus delta x would be the value of x evaluated at that point, minus x at this location. And of course that again would represent the delta x. All right, so that's how we find the, the slope on the tangent line. Now, does that equal the slope of the function? And you look at it and say, well, not really, because notice the slope of the function changes continuously depending upon where in the function we want to go look. Now, what does matter here is that the slope of the tangent line at this point, P, of course, which is the same as the slope of the tangent line, anywhere along the line, because a straight line has the same slope anywhere along the line, but when we look at point P, then we know that the slope of the tangent line is exactly equal to the slope of the function. That is not the case anywhere else, but it is the case at this one particular point. 
So later on we will learn to find the slope of the function we need to find the slope of the tangent line at the particular location of the function of course depending upon where we are in the function we'll need a different tangent line. If we want to know the slope of the function right there we'll have to draw a new tangent line like this. If we want to find the slope of the function here we need to draw a new tangent line like this. So the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line will only equal the slope of the function at one particular location. What's important here is that we understand the definition of a slope in other words, the slope, as we learn in algebra, is equal to the rise divided by the run, is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x, when I go from one point on the line to some other point on the line. Is that indeed the case for a function as well? Of course, not really, because you can see that since the slope changes, if we draw a line from this point to this point, we don't get a tangent line, we get a secant line, and as we saw in the previous video, the slope of the secant line and the slope of the tangent line are usually not the same, they're usually different. And so what we can then say is that the slope of a tangent line can approximate the slope of a function but not be exactly the same. So that's again the concept of a slope. What we'll learn in future videos is that the slope of a tangent line and the slope of a function then being close together will approximate the derivative of a function because after all the derivative of a function is really the slope of a function at a particular location. So we'll see that some more later. But if, if what you get out of this video, the concept of a slope, meaning the rise over the run, which means the change in the y points on the slope divided by the change in the x points on a particular line or slope, then we're good to go and then we can start looking at what limits mean and then how they relate to derivatives. So there we go, that's our second video and onward we'll find out a way to express the meaning of a slope the meaning of limits, and then eventually the meaning of a derivative. And that's what this is all about.